Hey, good morning. What is a conspiracy? Our reading today takes us to Jeremiah chapter 11, verses 9 through 14. And the Lord said to me, A conspiracy has been found among the men of Judah and among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They have turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers who refused to hear my words, and they have gone after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel and the house of Judah have broken my covenant, which I made with their fathers. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will surely bring calamity on them, which they will not be able to escape. And though they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. Then the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem will go and cry out to the gods to whom they offer incense. But they will not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of your cities were your gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, you have set up altars to that shameful thing, altars to burn incense to Baal. So do not pray for this people, or lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry out to me because of their trouble. Now here in the book of Jeremiah, we have an example of a real conspiracy. There's different kinds of conspiracies. A lot of people are laughing at the idea of conspiracies today. But there are intentional activities by people who conspire to, uh, to obtain to a certain outcome. There are in real life, there are in spiritual times, and so on as well. And here we have one. Now often a conspiracy is as simple as people agreeing not to turn the other person in. Sort of, uh, it's not necessarily a verbalized agreement or a written agreement. It's just that, uh, you know, he takes the cookie and you, you know it, he knows you know it, and you don't turn him in. And then you think, well, maybe I'll take a cookie, you know, illegitimately too, and he doesn't turn me in. And so it's a, like a uh, less formalized kind of a thing. And here we have the kingdom of Judah. These people are falling back into the worship of these idols and departing from the living God and, and going back into idolatry. And they're sort of agreeing, I think, not to, uh, not to really turn each other in, so to speak. And this thing grew and grew and grew and became such a, a, a moral fungus that, that uh, the whole nation was permeated with uh, idolatry virtually. It was, it was just about everywhere. And so it was effectively a conspiracy. So God determined to send judgment, uh, and this is going to be a very substantial judgment, and he's hoping that this will lead many of these people to turn back to him. But it'll be their free choice. And what's going to happen? Well, as soon as the armies come in, as soon as the nation is invaded, a lot of these people, a lot of them are going to start praying. They're going to start crying out to God and asking him to relent and save them. Of course they will. And God also foresees that Jeremiah will have that impulse. Jeremiah will want to pray to God and ask for him to deliver them. But a lot of times, you know, you need to take all the medicine. If you just take the first the first one or two, and then you don't take the rest of the medicine, you won't get well. And this is, this is a very substantial chastening God is doing on Israel. So they need the full treatment. And so he's not going to, he tells the Jeremiah, don't even pray for this people. It's not that he won't hear their prayers, their prayers in various points, but in terms of uh, withdrawing the invading armies from them? No, it's not going to happen. God says, no, it's not going to happen. You're going to get the full treatment. This is going to be, you know, the full course of, of chemo or whatever, you know, however you want to characterize this. God's going to give it all to them. So he's not even going to hear their prayers when they say no, because if he stopped the treatment prematurely, they would, they would continue to be spiritually ill. So what we need to do, we need to take the medicine that God gives us. God knows what he's doing. He's the great physician. We need to learn to trust the great physician. When we take the medicine in full, we'll receive his benefits in full. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, help us to be faithful in terms of doing what you would have us to do. Uh, Judah was faced with quite a proposition here, and they needed to, to be faithful and trust in you. So Lord, we look today and we wonder where are we coming up short? Maybe we don't wonder. Maybe it's pretty obvious and pretty clear in different places. Help us, Lord, to grow towards heaven Help us to be submitted and surrendered to you. Help us to receive all the medicine you give us, Lord, even if it, it's that kind of nasty-tasting medicine, stuff we don't want to flavor, we don't want to experience. And yet, Lord, Lord, please work for us and heal us no matter what it takes. Revive us again, O oh Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. May God help us not to participate in any conspiracy that dishonors him or that dishonors the work of the gospel. God be with you today.